Let's have a look at the basics of absolute value. Uh, absolute value, really what it means, is that whatever comes out, the answer that comes out of those absolute value signs automatically gets switched to a positive. So the absolute value of minus 7 is 7. The absolute value of 5, well, since it's already positive, it stays as a positive. In no way can an absolute value equal a negative. The same if we have a question like 5 minus 7. Well, 5 minus 7 is minus 2, but since it's inside the absolute value signs, it's always going to be a positive 2. So that's the simple part. It gets a little more complicated when you look at a question like pi, let's say pi minus 2. What does that equal? Well, pi is 3.14 and a whole bunch of other digit, digits. And that's greater than 2, so we can just leave it like that. We're not going to do the actual subtracting. So I can leave it as pi minus 2. Now, having absolute value does not mean everything inside becomes positive. All it means, the answer of what has been done inside, the answer of this little question needs to stay as positive. And 3.14 minus 2 is going to give me a positive answer, so that works out just fine. Where it gets a little more complicated is when you have something like that last one. Let's try pi minus 7. Now, pi minus 7 is going to give me a negative answer. So what I'm going to have to do, oh, well, pi minus 7 would be 3 point, negative 3 point something. So what I'm going to do when I take the answer out, is I'm going to take 7 and take away pi. It will give me the absolute value of what this was, but it will be a positive answer. Okay, right, going a little further in, we've got the shackled inequality property. Now this is the absolute value of x is less than b. Now b has to be greater than or equal to 0, can't be a negative number. We can actually rewrite this as x is going to be between b and negative b. That's the shackle, because it isn't in between those two parts that x is tied in the middle. So if x is less than something, or sorry, if the absolute value of x is less than something, we can rewrite it as that negative something is smaller than x, and x is smaller than the positive. It also works with uh, less than or equal to as well. For example, if 2x is less than 12, using the shackled inequality property, I can take a minus 12 on that side, and I'm going to put it less than 2x, which is also less than positive 12. Divide all three parts by, neg by 2, end up with minus 6 is less than 2x, sorry, less than x, which is less than 6. And there's my final answer. Now that shackled inequality property works because it works for any time where the absolute value of x is less than 2. Well, I mean, I can even have a negative 2 in that x, and that's still going to be less than or equal to 2, because I take the absolute value of it. So what it really says is that anything inside this range works in that equation. Now just like we had a property for when x is the absolute value of x is less than something, we've got a property called the here and there inequality property for whenever x is gr the absolute value of x is greater than something. And that one is written as x ends up being less than negative b or x is greater than b. Now, if you were to draw this region out on a, uh, a line graph, like I've got an example here, the absolute value of x is greater than 2. Anything in between minus 2 and 2 won't work on that because the absolute value of it is always going to be less than 2. 
But anytime we've got anything bigger than 2 or smaller than negative 2, it's going to end up being great. The absolute value of that is going to end up being greater than 2. For example, if I had a minus 3, the absolute value of minus 3 is 3, and 3 is greater than 2. So that's why this section works and this section works in that equation. So if I was to take that earlier line and write it out without the absolute value brackets, I would have to say x is less than negative 2 or x is greater than 2. You have to have that or because there are two parts on these ones. 